Hi all, welcome to Carpool Woodcraft. I'm Carl. In today's video we're going to have a workshop tour. The last workshop tour I did was in my old workshop which is right down at the bottom of the garden and that was in 2019. But now we've got this lovely workshop what we've built over the last couple of years and I'm going to give you a tour around it. This is the very first one and it may well be the last. And where else to start but at the tool wall. It's the heart of the workshop for me. Everyone says it's the table saw which you know, is debatable. But for me, this is my go-to location where I have everything that's handy. Marking gauges, uh, spirit levels, chisels, flush cut saws, hammers, uh, just everything that I reach for on a daily basis. And it's there, right in front of me. I can grab it, use it, and put it back. Some of my most used tools on here then are this little three inch engineer square, which I find super handy my combination square, the rubber mallet up in the top left hand corner there that's got a white head on it so it's great for knocking joints together without getting black marks on them we've got a knife here which comes in really handy, rulers, scribing equipment here, sliding bevel and just all marking gauges that's my main thing that I use on this wall on the other side then we've got flush cut saws, we've got some drill bits, we've got some spirit levels and the chisels that's pretty much it on there and it's all tanned and it's easy accessible and more importantly it's easy to put away because you don't want to leave stuff lying around all over the workshop so you use it and you just put it straight back. The workshop then is 17 feet by 10 feet so it's not a big space but we are a professional woodworking shop now we're working full time so we're limited in the space we've got but I do understand this is a large space to some people especially in the UK well, and other places in the world when you come from a small shed like that one which is now the wood store that we just looked at this is a luxury, but as a woodworking business, this needs to be uh, substantially bigger in my opinion. So, it's not a great big space, but it's not a tiny space as well, so I appreciate you people out there who wish you had a space this big, and it's something that everybody can aim for. If you've got a garden, you've got possibilities. And just next to the two wall here on the left hand side, we have some files and we have some rasps which are readily available there again to use. Then we have the tracks for the Dewalt track saw, just below the tool wall we have our jointing jig, we have a small track which is really handy in this small workshop and we have the builder's framing square. Next to the files and rasps we have some clamps, we have these great Bessie parallel clamps and we have these Magnuson sash clamps. We love a good combination of the sash clamps and the Bessie parallel clamps. The parallel clamps are great for pulling things flush and having things lovely and square and putting even pressure on the whole of the work. And the sash clamps are great for when you need to put some real serious clamping pressure behind something and just pull it together. Next to the clamps then, we have the drill charging station with a selection of different drills. I love these Abauer ones because they're a real good price and they're, ju they're just good for what they do for the money. Uh, we've got a full selection of them. We have the 12 volt ones which are great for in the workshop because they're nice and light, they're quiet and they're just great for your elbows if you've got tendonitis or your wrists and things like that. And then we have the 18 volt ones as well which have a bit more kick behind them for if you're on site and you need to put that power in. Up at the top here you can see we have a selection of chargers and then in the space in between we have all our drill bits, driver bits, things like that in little com convenient boxes there which we can grab and go and just throw back in there. I put these little drill holes in here so I can have a selection of the driver bits just on show and normally I have one of each type of bit like the PZ2, Philips, PZ1 in there so it's easy grab and go. Up above here we have some storage and then below that we have a shelf which just has convenient things to hand again a bit like the tool wall everything's on here is accessible and it's stuff used on a regular basis. Glues, water sprays, wet wipes, some screws at the end there Tape measures everywhere because I have tape measures everywhere in the workshop because I always put them down. Calculator, uh, the control for <laughs> dust collection, heat, air, things like that. And so it's all that and pencils, my small combination square which is heavily used as well. And then we've got the saw blades up here which are just conveniently out the way in between this dead space. Just below the shelf we have a small French cleat wall where we have things like the track saw which is always there ready to go and we can just pop it on there out the way, slide it down if it's in the way. On the opposite side we have the sanding station with a mixture of grits. On the left hand side we have the handheld sanding pad 
and the sander on top and you can just grab that and go wherever you are in the workshop. We're going to be doing a build video of this one in the near future and most of the things you see in the workshop will be build videos such as the Traxo holder here and like I say the sanding station one's going to be a video coming out soon and we're going to have plans for that which Jacob is working hard on at the minute. What we have here is just some metal working tools and some tools what are really handy just to have hanging on a piece of dowel here like pliers, scissors, etc. And uh, that's again, it's a tool wall which is convenient to have just in the corner there, some wasted space. Uh, so we come down from there, we have the ferric spell and disc sander, which is a great little tool, and the remote control there, which is for the record power dust collection system just above us there. That is a great little buy, and it really has improved the air quality in the workshop. Then we have the bandsaw, which is really just an overgrown scroll saw, really. And it's just used for cutting bits of dowels and cutting some small shapes and things like that. The next machine along is the oscillating sander. And this is the Shepak model. And again, this is one of them, what a lot of people say is a bit of a one-trick pony. But you'll be surprised how often you find it coming in handy. It's a, it's a good little tool to have. Just above there, we have the first aid kit. And then we have a selection of screws and accessories, brad nails, things like that. Everything's labelled up all the way up to just some boxes of screws on the top there. Well, there's some makers for you to follow. If you're not subscribed to these channels, get yourself across there. Well, let's have a little nosy in some of the drawers, see what we've got. So we've just got some little bits and bobs in this drawer, accessories, some bits of felt, wire wool, polished cloths. Clamps, tape, epoxy, milliput, shims, and silicone. And what we've got there, we've got some cable ties. Underneath there, you can see the shop vac there, which attaches up here to this equipment. Drawers again, little bits and bobs, pencils, pens, things like that, blades, gloves, a digital tape measure. Some Craig accessories. And then in the bottom, this is where I normally keep my camera equipment, which comprises of a tripod <laughs> and some bits and bobs in there. And then next to these drawers here, we've got some more trays with drill bits in for the drill press in there. Loads more drill bits in that one. And then router accessories in the bottom tray. Now we're just going to have to interrupt this TV programme for a really important broadcast. Uh, today the channel has got a really important sponsor and that sponsor is Carl Pope. Yes, he pays for everything himself and if you want to help the channel out, you can do that through either Patreon or PayPal or now the channel membership. You get your name in the credits, you get extra content and he's even brought a new little programme out which is called, what's it called again? It's called, that's what it's called, New Skill Wednesday. So every Wednesday is going to be showing you a new skill, what he's found, as well as the odd vlog update on how the workshop's going, builds are going, and the current climate in the woodworking industry. So be sure to jump on board. And swiftly moving on. So, clamping wall again here, and Right next to the tool wall and the other clamps at the opposite side there, we've got smaller clamps here, we've got F clamps, we've got squeeze clamps, uh, we've got all sorts of different C clamps, we've got uh, track clamps, so you name it, we've got a clamp for it on there. Moving on then, what do we have? We have some small screwdrivers up there which come in really handy for little tight places. We have the Craig clamps, we have some little bits of signage here, we've got all my favourite woodworkers here which have sent me a sticker. And we've also got my 1,000 subscriber uh, certificate. We've got the little bench top planer here from Rutlands, which is a review one. And we've got my Abawe ER 2100 watt router, which I've also done a review on. Both decent little bits of kit, especially for the money. Both of these tools then are situated on top of the mighty station, which if you haven't got a mighty station, it is so handy to have. It's, it's a go-to when you start your project normally, Cutting them long bits of timber down to rough dimensions before you take them over to your table saw or if you're doing any milling and things like that. 
They just shield, dust hood and dust draw come in so handy. They're just a great accessory to have in the workshop. And this drawer gets filled up about every two weeks and it just collects so much. So it hits the back of there, goes back in, there's a little ramp at the back and it all falls inside the drawer. We've also got a shop vac attached to it as well. So it's surprisingly pretty good. All the concepts for the dust collection on the mitre saw I got from Keith Brown over at Rag and Bone Brown. And it's, it's just been a game changer really has. On top of the mitre station then you can just use this as a bit of a dumping ground to be honest. We've got some hardware in this box here. Uh, we've got a lovely Bessie knife here which again we got from Roland Tools and Bessie. I don't use this very often because it's so nice but a quality bit of kit. And we've got some Famash bits here, Forstner bits and again they're from Bessie and they're, they're great as well. This is my favourite drawer. So it just holds so much in here in such a small space and again there's a video on this and it's double sided as well and it's surprisingly strong even though it's only on one of these draw runners at the top and bottom but it holds its weight totally fine and then we've got a selection of drawers here and let's have a look see what we've got in these hardware and accessories in there <sighs> Gets a bit dusty in that one. Next drawer down then, router bait, staple gun, and all bits and bobs really what you use in general day-to-day -day woodworking. Painting accessories. Painting accessories. And some more painting products in the bottom. More timber storage up there. And then we've got a little project here that I'm working on at the minute, which is going to be a video. And that's just going to be a French cleat storage system for all your dowels, dominoes, biscuits, things like that. Oh, there's a little drill press. A sanding station again. And on top of there, there's some little butter tubs full of router bits. Coming down below there, then we've got the... Charmwood W014 router table and inside there mounted we've got the Triton router and again this is on wheels because wheels are just great in a small workshop hiding under the mitre station down there at the back we've got some jigs templates a couple of shop vacs and then coming back up we've got the Craig pocket hole system master system K5 great enabling tool there We've got the Pro Thicknesser, which I got off Facebook Marketplace at a bargain price. In here again, we've just got bits and bats, jigsaw blades, glue sticks, just the odd little bit. And then we've got screws and just tools what are in boxes under there, handy for storage. This cabinet here should have a sign on it saying only break in case of emergencies. Because it's got the hand tools in it. Ooh, scary. So we don't go in there very often, but when we do, we do. And then we've got the chip collector there, which we use on the thickness uh, and we use it on the bench top planer. And what we do is we wheel them out, because everything's on wheels in my workshop, apart from the mic station. We wheel it out into the center of the shop here, and then we have a chain which hangs down from the ceiling, and that holds the chip collector 100 mil hose out the way, so nothing gets trapped or anything like that. Right in the center of the workshop, which you haven't seen yet, we have the main workbench, outfeed, side extension, assembly table, you name it, finishing table, it's everything. We've got a little bit of storage underneath for mitre gauges, sleds on the left hand side. It's got its own power supply, loads of space underneath for the shop vac and tools, accessories. And then last but not least, over near the door, we've just got, we've got whiteboard actually behind the uh, coats, which comes in really handy for when we're doing big projects and we need to keep a list and a track of where we are. And we've got the PPE here. Very important part of the workshop. Oh, and more wood storage there. Here's a current project that we're working on at the minute. Unfortunately, this isn't gonna be a video, but as you can see, this is the type of thing that we make in my workshop. We've got a beautiful oak unit there. 
Now we're just going to spin you around, have a little walk across the garden. That's just me kicking the door open, bright light. And we're going to have a go out and look at the wood store, which was my old shed. And if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you go back to my very first video, which was in this little shed here. There you go then guys, this was my very first little workshop. And it is now the wood store and general dumping ground. As you can see, we have loads of offcuts of timber. We have our sight saw, our sight bags, our sight saw horses, and loads of bits and bobs. Now expensive in here, just bits of wood and bits of bobs. There's the outside of the workshop. All that timber there is for an upcoming project, which I can't disclose at the moment. I hope you enjoyed the workshop tour guys, I hope I haven't missed anything out, I don't think I have, pretty comprehensive, and if you like that, you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment, catch up with the rest of the videos, we release a video at least once a week, and that will be for the foreseeable future, like I said, this may well be the last workshop tour in this workshop, but I'm not saying anything more than that, and we'll catch you on the next video, see you later! Where we have our... Readily handable, readily handable, readily available. Blah, 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 blah. And then router accessories in the bottom. <coughs> Over here on the front. Ah, you bugger. Splinter. Both of these tools are sat on the. What's this called? Mic station. Both of these tools are both which is just located here, we can pick it. So keep, stay tuned. Ugh.